Now you see me. Now you don't. Now you see me. Now you don't. Now you see me. Now you don't. Now you see me. Now. Okay, dude, that's enough. Well, excuse the hell out of me for wanting to have a little bit of fun with my damn reviewing show. Never let me do anything I want to. Everybody, Techie 101 here. Hit a review, Bleach chapter number 571. Wait a second. This doesn't seem like my backdrop. This seems like my my bedroom. All right, look. Here's what happened. This was my freaking fault. I'm sorry. This review has been a pain in the ass for the past two days. All right. Um, I started reviewing. I started the review of the chapter, and I did my opening skit. I do the intro, and then I started reviewing the chapter for like the first six or seven pages. Not that long into the chapter, um, you know, my my uh, my camera. I guess I didn't hit record. Um, I hit it later, and I didn't realize this. I thought the battery just died. I thought I was recording, and the battery died, so I just swipped out the batteries. I didn't know that uh, what happened was I forgot to hit record, and because of that, my camera just automatically turned off after a certain point. Um, so, luckily, it's not the entire review. Luckily, it was only, like, the first four or five minutes of the review for, like, the first couple ch uh, pages. I think it was, like, right before the title page, I, I died. So I'm just going to cover the beginning of the chapter, and then I'll cut back over to myself to finish off the review. That'll be, like, 14 minutes is the bulk, so don't worry. Um, but as for the beginning of the chapter, all right, so we have uh, Isani and uh, Yachiru, who are just, like, flabbergasted, I guess would be the best word to describe uh, what happened with uh, Gwenhal, because Gwenhal is basically has the ability to vanish. We don't exactly know what this ability can do yet, but he's basically able to phase in and out of existence, as well as removing his existence from people's minds. So, Yachira's bleeding on the floor, you know, her face is bashed in, Isane's just like, I have no idea what the hell's going on here, so they, she picks her up trying to, like, I guess to kill her. And then we see Gwenhale over in the corner, who, you know, he actually turns out to be, like, a really small guy. Like, he's, like, he's an Oompa Loompa, I guess. That's the first thing that came to my mind, because with the hairdo and everything, you know, it's a, he's like if an Oompa Loompa got dipped in acid, I guess would be the best way. I used that joke last uh, last uh, review, if it's Christopher Lloyd, if he got dipped in acid. But no, he's, he's an Oompa Loompa, um, which I guess would make Yuha Bach a Willy Wonka, but I guess I guess that could make that work. Okay, yeah, sure, totally. <laughs> So, uh, the, the really creepy thing here, though, about his height, though, is if you remember last chapter, we didn't really get a full picture of his, his, his body, but we saw that creepy-ass scene where I, st I called him the Stern Creeper, where he was introduced, where he's, like, like stooping over Isani, like, holding onto her back, like, giving her, like, a bear hug, and Isani's, like, creeped the hell out. Now, Isani's already, like, a pretty tall uh, woman already. She's, like, six foot something, and this Gwen Hale guy was able to stoop over her, so we just assumed, like, he was even taller. But no, what was actually happening was... He he actually jumped on Isane's back and was riding her piggybacks. You know that creeper got copped a feel at some point. So that just like adds to the creepy factor. This guy's finding new ways to transcend that word every single minute, right? Um... But yeah, so uh, he reintroduces himself again before fading away. Uh, he actually states his name is Gwen Hale Lee, so we get his last name. Like, well, I guess he's related to Rock Lee, I guess. That, you know, this is right where the, the chapter review cut off. So I'm apologizing if, you know, this was kind of, you know, distracting. Uh, you might be wondering why I decided to even do this. I could have just thrown up a text box why I decided to talk for like less than two, three minutes. Uh, it's because I really wanted to make that Willy Wonka joke. I just, I, I photoshopped that, you know. It took me a while to do that, to color everything in. I just, I wanted to do that. So so back to the review. Hope you enjoy. Also, uh, on my tie, you can't see it uh, in the review because I forgot to crop too low, but it's an A. And this stand, you saw that Smart Teching was wearing a D earlier. That stands for something that if you like Twitch post Pokemon, you'll understand what that means. But if not, okay, go back to this thing. Sorry, I'm, I'm distracting. Anyway, he, he continues to go, go on his kind of creepy monologue. You know how each Sternrunner has like their own monologue they go on about depending on what their ability is. You know, Asnot's thing was fear, so he just would ramble on about being afraid of everything. Masté Masculine was the superstar, so he kept going on those wrestling chants about being a superstar. Gwenhale's thing is just like, remember me, remember my touch. Remember my sight, remember my feel, remember my existence as he slowly fades away. So Yachiru comes after him, though, and manages to punch him again in the face, but nevertheless, he just disappears all over again, and once again, this old song and dance, Yachiru cannot remember who he just hit, who she just hit. 
So Gwen Hale, and I don't, I don't think this is like him speaking to them. I think this is just him thinking to himself, which this just makes less sense. But then we get a scene with Gwen Hale just talking about all the different, how his power works to himself, like the different phases. So his powers have three phases. Phase one is he just makes his form vanish. And phase two is he makes his essence vanish. That's what he's been using just now. Like just now against the Achiro, that's what he did. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with the brain yet. All right. So in this form, I guess this just means that he is making his form and his essence. So form would mean, I guess, his physical body and his essence would be like, I don't know, like, um, okay, let me think of it this way. If somebody is invisible in this room, just making their, just making themselves invisible into the sense that I won't be able to see them, that doesn't mean I wouldn't be able to figure it out because the body, you, you, your body kind of gives off a presence. You know, the body kind of gives off heat. It has other kind of representations of existing rather than just having, you know, just visually sight. I can tell somebody else would be in this room even if I couldn't be able to see them. Um, you know, uh, but I guess that's kind of like this. So his form disappears as in his physical body. I guess he's just turning invisible. And then his essence as in everything of his existence is just erased from that room or wherever he's at. It still doesn't go into explain exactly where he goes uh, because that that's the kind of like, like, like he has to go somewhere. I mean, I said disappear into the ether earlier. Like, okay, is it a different dimension? Is it like the space between dimensions? Is it like the negative zone? Uh, but yeah, I don't get it. So anyway, uh, she, he goes on to explain though that even though Yachiru managed to hit him both this time and last time, that's not actually hitting him. It's just hitting his after image because apparently whenever his essence disappeared, the body kind of lags behind. So uh, even though Yachiru hit him to the point where you could see blood and you could see him like bashing his freaking teeth in, that's still not enough. It's still, uh, you know, not really happening to him. It's just like an illusion, like the after image technique from, from Dragon Ball, you know? So he lands another blow and Yachiru manages to cut her shoulder. But once again, Yachiru is not really phased by all this. I mean, Yachiru Shiru was able to stand up, not, not I don't know, stand up to, to, to Kenpachi, but was able to be around Kenpachi without basically being crushed. He was basically being introduced to a massive freaking quantity of, of, of Riatsu from Kenpachi every day, and she was able to withstand that. So a couple punches in the face, a couple loose teeth, a couple of scratches and bruises aren't really going to damage her all that much. I feel bad for poor Isane. She's there just like, just like, what the hell's going on? You got hurt. Well, you got hurt some more. What's going on? Well, you got hurt some more. What's going on? You know? So, uh, now what's going on here is that apparently, uh, he's noticing that even though he's vanishing, uh, Yachiru is still managing to hit him, like, I guess, because they're not forgetting who he is at this point, they're just, you know, he's just, like, vanishing at one point in the room, showing up at another point, and Yachiru is reflexively reacting to each one of those scenes, you know, she punches a crate at one point, so, even though, uh, he's disappearing, she still reacts, so, he's just like, oh, okay, okay, no problem, this chick has some really good reflexes, it's time for phase three. Phase three is when they implement the whole uh, la like erasing them from their mind as well. So he figures, okay, now I'm going to completely erase my presence. They're going to forget who I am all over again. Yachira won't be react to me and I'll just be able to kill these guys. So she he erases his presence all over again. He reappears in the room and Yachira comes right at him again and he's just like, whoa, what the fuck? And he like disappears back into his, his pocket dimension or whatever. It's also interesting to note, every time he pops up after he erases their mind, he goes on his self-introduction again. He's like, oh, well, I'm tired of this song and Dance, but hey, I'm Stern Raider V. Dwayne. This is like the third time he's done that. I mean, dude, even the silence gave you like two freebies before they finally got bored and just nuked your fucking head off with a lightning bolt. And uh, everyone's just looking. He's just looking at her, like I guess from this, from his, uh, you know, from the space between spaces or whatever. He's just looking at her, he's like, who is this girl? No matter, like, this should be the first time we're meeting, like ever, and she's reacting to me like that. And he's going on this massive thing here, like, okay, this girl is literally just reacting to me and just perceiving me. It's it's not even like she's thinking like, that's the enemy, I need to beat him up. It's just like, oh, instantaneously, that is a bad person. I need to take him up like in her very instinctive nature. Even Asai brings up the fact like, wait a second, Yuchiru, you don't even know if that person is, a, is an enemy or a friend. You, you don't know if it's an ally, if it's a Stern Raider or what. And Yachiru, and like, like it's funny because you could hear him, I guess he is just talking to himself, which makes it even stranger that he was explaining his powers to himself. I mean, I can understand, like, like, like that, that would be just like Aizen, you know, walking around Karakura Town. It's like, yeah, I could blow up this entire town using my fragger technique. Oh, yes, my fragger technique, I forgot. That's when I combine all those hollow masks around me and I can make those giant Sarah-like explosions that could level an entire freaking country. 
Ah, yes, I remember that. And then I could use Hado number 90, Kurohitsugi, the incantation of which I remember is the crawling queen of mud, blacked in the, you know, just, it's just like going on and on about their own shit. They're already aware. I mean, for one thing, explaining it to a, like, like, that's the one thing I can see the whole monologuing thing passing about explaining your powers when it's the villain explaining it to a, 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 a like the, the uh, individual. Because in this case, you know, if Gwen Hale were to explain what his powers were to Yachiro and them, I would be okay with it. Because, you know, like, from his perspective, he could just disappear and make them all forget about it. But instead, he's just talking to himself, basically. Um, well, anyway, Yachiro just goes on to explain what, to Isane why she's, like, reacting the way she's reacting. Just like, that person made my heart skip a beat. And Gwen Hale's just like, that's that's ludicrous. That's ridiculous. Like, so she instantly just knows who uh, who this guy is. He's, he just doesn't know in the sense of if, uh, you know, what his whole backstory is, but she just knows just from the feeling he's giving off that this guy is a villain. So that's why she, she keeps doing that. So she goes rummaging around in some random box in the room and she digs out her Zompok toe. What, I don't know how that got in there. I guess when she was jumping on the bed, she wanted to make sure that thing was kept safe. So she digs that out. She pulls it out and she's explaining to you, Sonny, she's like, you know, it's not really like a cold sweat. It's just kind of like, you know, how you get the chills at night, you know, or the sweats and your stomach's just in knots and you really don't know why it's happening. I had that problem when I had to talk to a girl in high school. But yeah, that's basically it. You just, you just know the feeling coming off of it. Like this guy's bad news. So she pulls up her sword and she's just like, you see, whenever I was around Ken, uh, you know, Kenny, uh, Ken Sean, whenever, you know, that, that's basically how Kenpachi figured out who to cut up. He's like, if somebody gave off that feeling to me, like the cold sweat, that's when I just cut that guy up. So Yachiru kind of just adapted that mentality from Kenpachi. So she pulls out her sword and she's about to, I guess, release it when all of a sudden Gwen Hale just shows up with his freaking, it's kind of weird. It's like his weapon, but I can't really tell. It kind of looks like a knife, but there's like another protrusion coming off of it. So I'm just going to say it's a knife or whatever. So he goes and stabs her in the back, right? And I guess she, he does manage to stab her, but Yachiru once again is kind of unfazed by this. She whips around with her sword and tries to cut Gwen Hale. Gwen Hale just disappears again. It just like it doesn't matter what you do because I can disappear in literally a fraction of a microsecond. It's like instantaneous. You can attack me instantaneously, so it's kind of a kind of a deadlock here. But you will never be able to hit me with that power. So he disappears to the other side of the room, refazes, and then his nose gets cut. And he's just like, wait, what the hell? That can't be. And I, I, I dodged that blade. I definitely dodged that blade. You know, that's my power. You know, like what the hell's going on here? Yachiru shows up her zonpok down, and she's like, oh yeah, this sword. Even if you dodge it, you still get hit by it. And he's just like, well, that doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about? No, no, you still get hit by it. But I'm phasing into another... No, no, you still get hit by it. And, um... He's like, this is a copycat sword. This is my blade. And it's basically being, basically every move I make is being copied by this sword in some other form or some other entity. So regardless of if I hit you or not, some other version or, uh, you know, a manifestation of this sword is going to hit you. Because basically, since it copies everything I do, pretty much my entire field of vision is this sword's edge. So she activates her Shikai, Sampo Kenju, which manifests, uh, I don't know, something that looks like from the Where the Wild Things Are with a cleaver and, I don't know, a skeleton demon creature. Kind of looks like a Shinigami from Death Note holding another uh, kind of a bladed weapon. Kind of looks like it's made out of bone or something. And she, uh, you know, that's her sword, basically. And Gwen Hale's just looking on like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Faw! Bifurcated right down the freaking center. And that's the end of the chapter. They attack in thrices. My idea or perspective on exactly what her Zompok Toe does, because I was a little confused here. Disregard the two manifestations from behind her. Those aren't important yet, all right? I think what those are, more than anything else, are just kind of a, a representation or an illusion used to present her power or try to intimidate her opponent. Because she said, no matter what my sword, my sword copies everything I do, so everything in my field of vision is attacked. Maybe she can manifest those creatures behind her because she's such a child, she can make her like her imaginary friends. Let's just call them that. Let's just call them her imaginary friends. And she can make even more if she wanted to. She doesn't have to if she doesn't want to. Her attack would work just the same. It, it, you know, Gwen Hale would still have gotten cut regardless. She just chooses to use these these creatures just kind of as a, as a representation, just to kind of play around just because of her imaginative personality. Uh, and yes, I do think she can make more. Also, pay attention to the fact that each of those creatures, their weapons, regardless of how big the 
creatures were, their weapons were the exact length of Yachiru's sword. The, uh, where the wild things are, that, like, like that little, you know, fat little, uh, I, 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 he reminds me of something so much, but I cannot for the life of me remember, I, I, I don't remember, but he's holding a meat cleaver. Meat cleaver is about the same length as Yachiru's katana. That massive freaking, you know, death, you know, reaper behind her, you know, holding a bone knife or whatever, also about the same length of her sword. Um, so that, that's what I think that is. I think just whatever, you know, she attacks or, or but that per she perceives as an enemy, regardless of where they are in the room, uh, they'll get hit. Uh, this, of course, is a little bit more disconcerting when you figure two things about Gwen Hale. Cole mentioned one, and that is that he basically has no attack power. And that's, you know, from what we've seen in this chapter, that's basically right. I mean, even when he was pissed off at Yachiru for, you know, for hitting him all those freaking times or attempting to hit him all those freaking times, what did he do? He just whipped out a knife and stabbed her in the back. That's all he did. You know, that's all he, his attacks are, are up to this point, either punching her or, like, cutting her, you know? So I'm not going to go too much into that because Cole already brought that up, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out, like, yeah, I mean, he's not, like, really showing off any major power. I mean, hell, uh, any other Sternrider up to this point, even without going into Volt standing, put up at least a little bit of a fight. This guy is just dodging around like a freaking, you know, annoying little bug, you know, as Yami would say, quit scuttling about, you little bugs, you know, basically. Um, and the other thing about him is that I just, I, I, I'm kind of disappointed in his power, you know, I thought he was going into a different dimension or something. Uh, apparently, he's just invisible. Because you gotta figure it this way, if he's going and phasing into a different dimension, Yachiru wouldn't be able to hit him. So, that's one thing I was confused by when she said, my attack will hit anything in my field of vision. Well, you know, if it's a different dimension, it doesn't matter. You know, and that's just that's just basically what I have to say about that. Um, I guess he's just invisible, or I guess he's in a in, in a, like maybe he like there's some scenes where he's like on the wall, maybe he's like part of the wall, but it's it's clearly not a different dimension. It's not even close to being referred to as a vanishing point. When in the sense like you're completely gone from this reality, if you can be cut by a sword in this reality, then you belong to this reality. I mean, it doesn't take a genius there. Uh, but anyway, I, I don't I don't want to say he's dead yet because you know I would love to say that that Yachiru finally got a freaking KO. But, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying it because we haven't seen his Volt standing yet. I'm just simply saying it uh, because this, guy, this guy's whole deal is getting out of sticky situations like this. The whole reason he's around, his whole power is, is around of getting, uh, escaping from, uh, from, uh, from attacks and vanishing before your very eyes. So maybe he has some other power he hasn't pulled out of his hat yet. Uh, I don't want to say Volt standing because he was, like, like, shocked by this. I don't even think he had time to go Volt standing. But maybe there's something else he did. Maybe there's something else. Maybe, like, he can multiply himself. Like, oh, I can split into twos or something. Like, he's like, James, I don't know. But uh, I don't want to say he's dead yet just because it's only been, like, two chapters. But pretty kick-ass sword for you, Cheer. I hope she explains it more in the next chapter. Uh, and I hope she, you know, elaborates on the whole, you know, what these creatures are behind her, what I think they are anyway. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed Techie 101 for Anarchy, signing out. Thank you.